Here we are. Uh, we're going to do a, a, web, a webinar today on WebEx Social, and um, my my role in this, uh, and I'm Reardon Maynard, I'm the CEO of Touchbase, is really just to give you a quick introduction and set up, and then hand over to Jeff Sadecki from Cisco, who's going to talk um, in a bit of detail uh, and give us an overview of WebEx Social, uh, one of Cisco's new products from the sort of WebEx family, uh, and then give us a quick demonstration of WebEx Social. Now, clearly, we, we have about 60 minutes, so the depth that Jeff can go into is not um, is not massive, but I think um, uh, hopefully you'll agree at the end that it's a, a useful exercise and uh, interesting to take a look. And then I'll just give a quick summary of, um, uh, of uh, what Jeff's been through and, and touch bases observations on social software generally. From a, a setup perspective, touch, I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about Touchbase. This is not a sales session. It's really here. You know, we want to try and inform people who are interested around um, technologies that are developing and becoming available. But we're a global technology services company. We've been around 20 years, um, worked with over 1,000 companies, really focused on helping them understand where they can drive value and return um, from a business perspective, from their investment in communications technology. Um, we've chosen this topic today because obviously these webinars need to be informative. Uh, we think they should focus on various topics, you know, whether they're tactical things that are important to you on a day-to-day -day basis or more strategic things, which this one would certainly fall into. And there's certainly a, a major um, level of interest in social software and the impact that the principles of social software can have on business. Uh, and, and certainly over the last 20 years since we've been going, we've seen a few shifts in uh, technology, you know, moving to e people using email pervasively, uh, people using mobile phones pervasively. Those are sort of those represented big shifts in how uh, people communicate and how business gets done. And we feel very strongly, and we think that um, social enterprise social software is in the same sort of category. Uh, obviously, it's it's slowly getting to be understood uh, and products are slowly developing to a point where they are you know, enterprise class and um, it's possible for companies to embrace them fully. But we do think that they have the chance to fundamentally change the way that business communicates and the way that business is done uh, and therefore thought it was a, an interesting and important topic to um, to bring on to this webinar. So hopefully you'll agree at the end. Uh, in terms of the outcome, I think we'd like you to go away just understanding a little more about enterprise social software generally, and then specifically how Cisco are coming to the market um, with their uh, WebEx social product um, and the sort of things that it can do for you. So on that note, I'm going to pass over to um, Jeff Sadecki, who's one of Cisco's top uh, specialists around WebEx Social, and we'll be able to give us a much, much uh, more in-depth understanding of uh, what we're talking about. I'm just going to pass the ball to him. Jeff, are you there? There we go. Sorry about that. I had unmuted my phone but failed to see that it was muted on the WebEx social side or the WebEx uh, meeting center side. So good morning, good day, everyone. Thank you, Reardon, for the introduction. I'm pleased to be here today to talk to you about um, the specific product that Cisco has, uh, WebEx social, but really more um, raise your awareness in regards to the trends that, that are happening in not just IT, but various uh, lines of the business that you may, may have, right, you may be aware of, and that's looking at and adopting and considering enterprise social as a strategy and platform for a better collaboration outcome. And I think that's the best way to describe what I want to get across is, yes, it's technology, it's a new, it's a new way of doing things, but part of what it brings to the value with not only the features and the functions that are somewhat unique to the enterprise social or the social paradigm, but also the value of what uh, TouchBase could provide from implementation service. Because um, in any strategy you're going to consider for this, it is 
it is relatively new, right? It is, is a new phenomenon in regards to how people and people within organizations can better connect the human capital, right? All your individuals within the organization to better find resources, get results, uh, better outcome for, um, uh, for for whatever they're trying to do. So I'll pause here and, and share my presentation. We'll kick off with that more formal part, and then I'll go into the demo. All right, is everyone seeing the presentation okay? Good. Perfect. All right, so as I indicated, WebEx Social, uh, really uh, you know, discussing the, um, what it can do to provide a better collaboration outcome in your business. Certainly all of what you do in your individual businesses, uh, the functions, you, you have communication collaboration initiatives, um, uh, tools and processes and so on. But this is the, you know, this is uh, talking about and positioning that the the new place to go, which would really be in some cases the replacement strategy for other disparate sites and sources or existing processes, because it's a better integrated solution, enabling the features and the functionality of social to drive better outcomes in whatever you're working on or whatever you're trying to do. Um, so yeah, I like to set up and, and kick off the presentation just to you know throw it out. It's like, well, why are we here? You know, today, what's you know, what is this phenomenon of enterprise social? To answer it and frame it, position it on a couple different fronts. The first being, as we can appreciate, you know, we probably all have Cisco included, and once again, in my tenure being here, there's been challenges over the time in regards to how do we better connect collaborate, communicate, find experts, find answers, and so on. But we're really seeing three broad areas that um, can be addressed or that are business challenges, right? So we know there's a ton of reference and conversations about BYOD, the mobility aspect, certainly from a lot of large enterprise organizations, Cisco included. There's the wealth of remote workers, teleworkers, and, and so on. So what can, what can we position with them it's a better place to um, find the, the collective intelligence. There's, there's a common theme I'm going to probably mention more than once in the presentation that uh, by entering and positioning a pervasive social platform in its connectivity and the options, it really becomes your institutional knowledge, your corporate memory. It's the place where information goes to live, not where information you know, often goes to die very quickly via the email analogy of spray and pray, it's dead after seven days, it's not relevant, and so on. It's more the, you know, the aspect of turning it into, if I'm going to put something in the social paradigm of connecting with people and communities or a piece of information in an object, it's going to be uh, around for a while. So part of that is, you know, with, if you're a remote worker, how can I better enable uh, and drive the productivity of distributed virtual teams? Some of the functions of what a social platform can do with the process and the culture, right, the guidance, the expertise, kind of laying out a communication or collaboration architecture and a vision of which touch, touch base would assist you with is to really break organizational silos whenever appropriate, right? So a lot of people still have the, well, I'm going to get in a social platform and I'm going to align to the communities and HR and marketing and, and engineering and so on or whatever your lines of business may be, but what I have found through actually implementing at, you know, social within Cisco is if you can attack and address cross-functional communities to break organizational silos, you truly have a, a wealth of information that can be exposed, not just of documents, but the people and the expertise to help drive uh, the outcome. Because it provides you to better open up communications between all of us in the organization. And in reference to what I talked about earlier, you know, the paradigm or the you know, the, the thought, if you will, the institutional knowledge, the corporate memory, is really that's what this is about, right? A common place now that people can say, you know what, I'm going to collect, co collect and coalesce around specific posts and or communities to share that uh, knowledge. And I can have that ability to easily expose and share it with other uh, people and employees to, to expand about, expand around and, and past the people I know to the adjacencies of who may be else 
in the organization that I didn't know existed or I didn't know they had that expertise that could actually help me in my goal and my objective team or whatever. So certainly we see and understand that from a tool perspective, if we consider, and I think the paradigm is, is probably universal, the email is the common denominator of the platform for communications that's been around forever, right? Since since everyone got connected on your intranets, right? The first probably big application, perhaps even before an HTML, you know, internal website was email. Now email is, is great and it's gonna be around for a long time, but I'm suggesting there's a better way to disseminate information to a collective audience with the purpose of acting on it, as opposed to, you know, use email to send, you know, let's get together for a, after work drinks, right, with a team party. But if you're sending something, especially with attachments, that's where email falls miserably on its face in regards to a, a threaded, cohesive conversation. And we can all appreciate the inbox overload, the explosive data growth, the weak access controls. And uh, what's not listed here, but a common phrase that I like to say is, is with email and what other sites and sources that you have in your organization, you as an individual really are the information hunter, gatherer, and sorter, right? You have to manage and figure the inbox out. You know, certainly there's there's new, newer nerd knobs within a, whatever email tool you're using for collectively, you know, putting threads together, finding the most recent, um, finding messages from sender, from description, and so on. But it's not in natively uh, in intuitive, right, to say, okay, this thread goes together, where's the, the latest, and so on. So that's part of what we're trying to address is how can we make communications more collaborative and less of uh, less sporadic, if you will. So further, you know, right, I'm still in the section of, you know, why enterprise social, why this phenomenon, what's happening. There's a wealth of um, of information out there, right, from, from uh, studies, books, journals, articles, threads, blogs, whatever, there is no lack of very valid data talking about what enterprise social is and the benefits and how, you know, what you can achieve by adopting it. So this particular um, uh, study, which is done by MIT Sloan in, in cooperation with Deloitte, um, was earlier this year, social business, what are companies really doing? And I wanted to draw out two um, screenshots of, of bits and pieces of information from this study. It's really trying to position, right, if you're considering social now, you're on probably the more of the leading edge of considering, you know, what can I do to transform my business into be a more collaborative, connected organization. So from this particular study, it says the importance of social software um, is expected to rise by 250% within three years. So today, roughly, you know, about 20% of executives from the results of the study or view the importance of social software growing dramatically over the next three years. So part of your, you know, your attendance and interest in this is, you know, where you should start to consider, I want to look at and, and define my enterprise social strategy, the product, the platform, the goal, the outcome of what I want to achieve with this. Because what can, what can it provide, right? As I said, there's a wealth of information out there. So from this particular study, the three common most things that the study highlighted was networking with others in the organization. Well, what did I say in my previous slide that, you know, there's a wealth of, um, or there's a vast number of people that are, might be working remotely, globally, you know, much more um, distributed, um, not connected in a real physical office for that. So what better provides that than an online pervasive 24 seven place to go um, where you can connect with others in your organization to work more effectively with whatever you're trying to do, right? The number one result in composite score from this study analysis, working more effectively to voice opinions, feel more connected in the organization, um, developing skills, all very valid um, data points and results of what you can consider in general that enterprise social application and, and solution in your implementation could provide in your particular scenario. So Cisco, of course, jumped on the bandwagon. There's at least one. This is um, still relatively recent. It's about a year ago it was published, but uh, describing from our key executives, the title, The Collaboration Imperative, uh, Unlocking Your Organization's True Potential, wealth of books out there, right, describing. Um, you can even go back to, you know, the subsets of what 
previously or defined some of the space of Web 2.0, be kind of before it was renamed Enterprise 2.0, or you know, some have shortened it now to E2O, is you know, Wikinomics, the phenomenon of Wikipedia, right? That collectively working together on documents via an online uh, instance, right? Via a browser interface for that. Um, you know, just here's the last one, right? From Computer World, from the summer time frame, Enterprise. Enterprises must collaborate and get social now or pay later, where they say in, the, in this top um, opening, research from Gartner predicts that by 2015, 40% of large businesses will have the equivalent of corporate Facebook network. So paying attention to it now, defining your strategy is, is perfect in the timing for this call. So kind of now moving into our positioning of enterprise social, and we'll get into the product platform here uh, specifically, you're probably aware of a lot of different vendors have touted socializing, if you will, using that in a good term, uh, aspects of their, you know, their EDM, their their CRM, their whatever, you know, the aspects of, you know, making whatever that function is. When I like to position that, you know, certainly CRM and enterprise document management are all valid functions of what an IT organization needs to provide. And yeah, I suppose adding social on top of that will make the, the product easier to use and more valid. But our positioning is, you know, we're trying to provide a, a ubiquitous platform that isn't concerned with any particular instance of the function, you know, an individual function that a group may do, but all functions. So it's not about the what, right? It's not about the document. You know, my, my pet phrase is documents don't make decisions, people make decisions certainly with information found in the documents, but it's the collective knowledge of what the people do in referencing those. It's not the end-all the be-all that you've got a great place that documents are stored. It's how are, going to people, how are people going to interact with them and collaborate and make the decisions. So we view it's around the who, not the band, right? It's the people, the human capital in your organization that are going to take advantage of the connectedness of who they know, the documents and the relationships and the comments and the threads and the information. And then in just in supporting very high level trends that Cisco is seeing is we're moving very much into a mobile, social, visual and virtual type of representation of the IT infrastructure and the, the data and applications. Mobile and social are definitely of what we're addressing to today with um, WebEx social and how it can be delivered. So our product, as we've, uh, as I previously set up and teed up for this slide, is it's a people-centric, right? It's, it's not about any particular subset of what people may do or the functions of an organization. It's making them all better or connecting them into them. So it's really about harnessing the knowledge and expertise in your organization, you know, once again, taking advantage of the human capital and, in, and empowering the users with a choice and control of what they have at their fingertips for how to use the application, how to better find, follow, um, be fed information, filter content, um, providing that people-centric collaboration platform that really unifies the workspace through the anytime social content creation in real-time communications across devices. Now, depending on your particular um, uh, Cisco influence in your shop, right? whatever you have with Cisco collaboration functions, products, uh, technology, solutions, you know, certainly there's some points we hook into well there, right? That's our strong suit, but certainly want to emphasize the fact that you don't have to be a Cisco customer to take advantage of all the, the features and functions of WebEx Social. So what really now are we, you know, we've I've moved along and said, we really do need to consider, you need to consider that business in your functions is a more collaborative, networked, and social type environment, such that the conversations that people have amongst themselves or in the work groups about you know, what they're working on, what they're trying to achieve, what, what is their goal, working on a project, an RFP, a new whatever uh, design, to form the teams within the communities so that you have better access to information, your processes are improved, and you have the alignment of projects to communities such that it's not the, now I need to, I know I need to go to this web portal and this email thread and or alias and I've got a separate, you know, wiki site and a blog site. It's around everything coalesced together primarily, not exclusively, but we like to suggest it's the primary place to go such that the outcome of your projects or whatever is better done 
with an enterprise social networking platform like WebEx Social because behind the scenes, we're really providing the glue in an intuitive people-to-people -people connection, the people-to-activity, and the people-to-content. If you loosely, high-level, think about what the WebEx Social environment, it's around people, communities, and information better connected with uh, the interface of a MyView and your, your role to customize your MyView or engage in communities and customize those um, if you're an admin or, or have the rights to. So if you're not familiar with it, a quick um, snapshot in regards to the primary web browser interface, um, a very um, intuitive, right, looks familiar to other social type of applications, but the green um, columns on the left and the right really draw out some of the, the unique value of what the enterprise social collaboration platform can provide. A few of these that I want to draw out, um, one second, profiles. So every, every organization has some ability via you know, an online lookup or a directory space to find out who the people are within the organization. Really hooking into, you know, Jeff works for Dave and here's his primary telephone number and address and so on and so forth. But what the, by connecting that information into the social profile within WebEx Social really allows the power of who the people are and their self-labeling of expertise and interest and who they're following to build that social graph, if you will, internally of the knowledge and the, and the connectedness within the organization. The features of, of I have an activity stream and a watch list, right? That's the new paradigm of finding, following, and being fed information as opposed to you, you know, um, somewhat trying to um, gather and sort your inbox or whatever sources of information. It's a more intelligent way. It's, it's the stream or river or flow of information coming at you where you can quickly disseminate and filter the specific variances of do I want to see the activities, the watch list, by whom, community, questions, and so on. So it's a better way to organize the process of how you digest and react to information. Um, some of the, you know, the features, depending on the, the application and how this is implemented in your environment at a very high level, I'm not going to go into um, architectural technical discussion nor pricing, but there are two, um, two general ways to consider that WebEx Social could be implemented that being on-premise with hardware software, and we can obviously work and tie directly into your uh, connections and interfaces behind the scene. If you happen to be a Cisco um, collaboration customer, uh, Unified Communications, IP telephony, whatever you want to call it, you know, we have the ability to hook in for click-to-call, um, click-to-meet, and so on. So on-premise is one installation method, and via cloud delivery is another, where 90% of all the features that we have on-premise are available via the cloud, um, including you know, presence with uh, a click, or seeing the presence information, um, click to chat, and so on. We, we have, uh, you know, through the, through, the, through the growth and the development of generically the Web 2.0 um, space in the past several years, you know, people have become accustomed to you know, what the value is in the functions of a wiki, blog, discussion thread, you know, micro post, uh, also known as perhaps tweeting, um, and that features and functions. So this is a comprehensive integrated solution set, right? It's a complete social collaboration platform. You know, it wasn't too long ago within Cisco, you truly had to choose, well, if I want to do a wiki, I go to this site. If I want to do a discussion thread, I go to a separate site. So that's part of what happens, right? The individual best of breeds often get, you know, commingled into a service or a suite or a function, and that's exactly what's happened within the social collaboration platform. But the difference is we have taken the best of what the wiki provides and discussion threads and so on and helped simplify the interface. If you can see where I'm hovering over here, this primary post, and I'll get into this briefly when I do the demo, that's the interface for the most part that people interact with the system. If they want to ask a question, they post a question. If they upload a document, they post a document. Um, so you can see it's, we're taking away the, the training issue of, now remember what a wiki is and that's different and so on. It really is genericized or simplified, if you will, into the verb and the noun of posting it within the WebEx social environment. You should consider either via the on-prem or the cloud delivery service that it is, that is an app, it, it's a platform that can be integrated. Certainly we have you know, the built-in functions but several ways that it can be um, scaled, skinned, and extended 
can be done within WebEx Social. So even from the cloud environment, the, the basic look and feel of the colors, the logo, the icon um, can be customized to your particular environment. Further customization to begin on, can be done on premise with um, a software de development kit and access to APIs where you can custom develop interactions, if you will, portlets that can be embedded within the MyView or, or community space. So we can you know, provide that comprehensive primary source that you go to to start here and you can get anywhere. I think I borrowed that from another vendor, but I'm not sure which one. Uh, anyway, within both platforms, you have open social gadgets. Open social is not a Cisco standard, so it's an open standard to write containers of how you can interact, you know, go out and get uh, information from other sites and sources. So you definitely consider that open social or WebEx social is a platform. Some of the capabilities, I'll go through this really quickly. I might have to just suggest skipping over it because I'm going to go over it when the demo. But the top and the bottom uh, blue circle, the unified post in the dynamic communities, think of those, remember those as that's how people coalesce, right? How they, how they ask a question, how they present, you know, give something to another person in a very private, uh, secure manner, right? Instead of, and we frequently talk about when we demo, you're going to kind of want to position that instead of doing email, you might want to, you know, start here first and train your users of, you know, especially when it comes to documents. Instead of sending an email, use the post for this uh, type of function. And dynamic communities are the, the larger containers, if you will, of how people can connect and coalesce together around, once again, that goal and that outcome. It's not just a community for the sake of, woohoo, let's, let's name a community. Well, what do you want to do with it? What, what do you want to drive and provide the outcome for that? Um, so the other features and functions, in addition, so this is the mobility aspect. We have a very powerful uh, iOS application, uh, iPhones and iPads, obviously, for this, where it provides a very strong secondary interface. Not primary for the fact that some functions you still need to go to the web browser interface for creating the communities and, and other advanced things. But once you do, if you're tooling around and you've got mobile connectivity, and you can connect up into it. There's a variety of very, you know, very powerful functions, very easy to use functions you can use on a mobile device like iPhones or iPads to connect up into the social environment to keep up and keep track of activity. Microsoft, we have several uh, ways we link interconnect into Microsoft. One of them, um, especially if you're an on-premise installation, we can, you know, natively hook into your Exchange and Active Directory, so we can pull that calendar information in and present it onto your home uh, space. But even um, this particular slide is talking about the Office integration. So if you have an Office suite within your environment, um, in your implementation is either cloud or on-premise, we have a very powerful way to say, if you're working on, obviously, PowerPoints, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, continue to work on them in that native, you know, powerful tool that the suite of Microsoft application provides, but now you're going to store them in the social paradigm. You're going to collect them in a post. You're going to share them with individuals or communities. So now when you, when you click on that post, when you're downloading that document or that PowerPoint, you're working on them within the, within the uh, office suite of application. But we now provide a, a window into the social information, right? So if you upload it, people may want will comment on it, right? That's why you shared it with people. It's like, what do you think of this presentation? Can I get your feedback? Well, in the old way, if you send it to 10 people, you'd have gotten 10 comments back. You'd have got 10 versions back of the Word document, with, all with the names, right, or your, your initials, um, a part of the, the file naming structure. You then had to digest all those changes, manipulate the document, and so on. The saner, more efficient way of doing it is uploading it once, sharing it with multiple people at the same time, and then taking their comments in a threaded fashion in being able to work on that in this document uh, paradigm. Other people can, if they have the rights, can modify and work on the documents and will keep track of and know people that are working on the changes. So you can track changes, see if someone else has, merge, change, merge changes and so on, all while it you know, writes it back up to the document storage space within social and that post paradigm. So a very powerful workflow integration of utilizing the office tools, but tying it into the, the social paradigm of people working on it or commenting on it in the social space. And while I, you know, I kind of dissed email a little bit earlier in the presentation, it does have, it's a, 
it's a place and will certainly have its place for a long, long time. And that is people are comfortable with the email paradigm and the interface. And we now work very seamlessly with email. So bi-directional email um, integration, such that if there's activity happening on the WebEx social, you'll get notified that on that via the email interface. You can reply to it via the email interface and it will get the comments, threaded information will get back into the social um, container that holds it, right, the area. Um, you can start a, a post, a discussion via email and, and have that integrated. You can even do tagging within the email and the tagging will be pulled forward into the social paradigm, the social container, right, the WebEx social environment such that it's part of the, the usage and functionality. So it's it's a it's not an and or scenario. It's a uh, it's an and and scenario. You can use um, email and WebEx social um, or both, right? So it's very easy to go back and forth and use the familiarity of well, I want to primarily stick for a while within my inbox and work with that. And you can you know see the discussions, reply to them via email, and you're still participating and getting that information into the into the institutional knowledge, the corporate memory of where it's going to reside. So, so your user population can now have a huge sigh of relief. It's like, okay, I don't necessarily need to keep track of all this information in my inbox, store the mega files of PSTs year after year after year so I can remember what information I replied to. It's going to become part of your culture DNA that it's going to be in the, um, the institutional knowledge, right? That place within WebEx Social that it's stored. So rounding out the presentation before I get briefly into the demo, you know, we really see that it helps break organizational silos to share content across communities of groups and interest, um, discover experts, that's a key function, capture and scaling knowledge, tying into what I said earlier about, um, you know, that, that institutional knowledge, but really several aspects, like from an HR perspective, I've got a new, you know, a new round of uh, people coming in, right? New employees. Well, how do I quickly acclimate them into my environment? Immerse them, right? Assign them to the new hire communities. Will there be mentors helping them answer questions? Will there be a, a logical, graphical, friendly user interface in regards to videos, posts, information for them to, to uh, drill down? There'll be a logical container of where to ask questions about onboarding, new hire, right? That's the purpose of why you went there was to better assimilate people into your organization. And really from a, from a more BDM, TDM type of decision, by helping to concentrate and simplify your um, implementation, right? You don't need various EDMs, social aspects, uh, wikis, blogs, and discussion threads. You can start to, in some cases, sunset, as Cisco has done, the various sites and tools and help simplify you know, where do I go? You primarily go to WebEx Social. Certainly other sites still may exist, but for the most part, it's going to be there so you can have better IT control and flexibility, reduce cost, and so on. So last slide, our differentiators is a very powerful out-of-the-box social collaboration platform. The, the um, tying in of, of real-time and social convergence, you know, if you happen to have gone down a collaboration path, you know, I like to tell the story. It's like, you know, we've really moved far into the future in regards to, you know, uh, web collaboration as we're using today with WebEx Meeting, you know, sharing a desktop, sharing video, although I forgot to turn on my camera, um, you know, for that real-time convergence, the, the power and effectiveness has greatly been increased by those applications. But what happens when we end this call? Where do you go to continue the work to find information? Especially in your organization, you can now say, I'm launching a new product. I have a new initiative. I have a new you know, in, in my team, I have this new project or outcome. I've got, you know, a six-month thing that I'm working on. The next thing out of your mouth is, and here's the community and the tags and the information that I want you to go to start to work on this. So you can lead them into the collaboration scenario. It's where you go when you hang up the, the real-time call to continue the work um, and continuing it very effectively with mobile devices or, or web interface. Primarily done with the unified post model. Um, and also providing uh, native mobile support and a very powerful user-centric experience. Uh, let me uh, take one break here. Any uh, questions at this time before I break into the demo? Any questions out there? Reardon, all makes sense? 
Very good, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. All right, let me move into um, doing a brief, brief overview, WebEx Social. First and foremost, I've logged into WebEx Social, and what's provided is the Home Overview tab. And this is a completely customizable space with areas, information, portlets, uh, access, and setup that an individual can tailor the application as their home landing spot, right? It's very familiar. You know, that's a lot of what applications provide is the, the choice and control of how you're going to customize the application, and that's certainly what we have available here. So some of the themes when I present this are, you know, to describe how you're better connected, how you're better informed, how you're going to better find information and experts and, and so on. So part of that on that theme is, you know, better in, informed is I can have an RSS feed, right? So that can this is a portlet, right? Anything up here, I can add an application, and this just happens to be an RSS application I can place here. I can modify it with, you know, any URLs to pull that information in. So I can, you know, view the sites and the sources and the abbreviated information provided. Remember I talked about, the, you know, the river or flow of information, and that's provided by the streams portlet. So this is your primary heads-up dashboard display to better manage and digest, digest information um, happening in the social context, right? So instead of going to your inbox, you're going to probably start here to better understand what's happening with, you know, my areas of people that I'm following, communities that I'm following, tags related to information, and so on. So it's broken out into activities, which are the the raw um, flow of information that are out there and a more germane list called watch list. So this is content that I've created or someone has shared with me or something that I've found that I want to watch that I think is pertinent. So this is that ongoing uh, area. And so you can, you can imagine, right, as I'm uh, associated with the implementation and talking to customers about WebEx Social, I certainly want to know the information about cloud customization. So this is in my watch list and I'm filtering on most recent. I can see a blue bar of something as has not been read recently, so I can easily digest the stuff that I may want to pension, pay attention to sooner rather than later, the most recent things. Or I can look at you know something that I haven't even had a chance to read and look at something as unread. I can look at um, favorites or the ability that anytime I, I see a particular uh, function, I clicked on that particular post, I can mark it with a blue star, and that would move it into my favorite category. So this is that, that super um, special list, somewhat smaller, of the information that I want to look at, and maybe I want to filter just on those favorites. Questions is a, is a common paradigm, right? If you're going to post, if you're going to find people with it out there, I want to ask a question, and here's where you can filter in on specific questions that are there. So you can see it's a, a much quicker, saner way to logically look at the areas um, for that. Now certainly you probably might be thinking, it's like, well that could still be a lot. And I can then filter down by specific people, communities, or tags to quickly have a, a, a intersection of, I just want to see the questions by this particular person or, or tag or so on. So streams is the powerful way to be better informed, um, much like RSS. Better connected is an example of calendar. We have an integrated calendar tying into your, depending on the implementation, your local uh, exchange or IBM uh, environment to pull in the calendar information. And also, if you happen to have, be a WebEx Meeting Center customer, it will pull in those meetings. So you can see here I have the, the relevant meetings from my calendar in the WebEx meetings. You can see that whenever I hover over a name, picture, person, it brings up a a uh, Rolodex type card of information. So you can see the pertinent information of Dave's available. Well, I could immediately move in and see he's available and click on a chat button. And that would open up a, an in window, right, in application chat functionality that I could move into a, you know, hey, you there uh, type of initial conversation. And once we do, and depending on your implementation and scenario, that I could move into a, a click to call. So I've elevated that and I'm tying into the social to the real time. Uh, communications. If you didn't have this, you could certainly hook it in and it would understand where your email is. 
So if this will help spawn the connectedness. You know, I, I found Dave, he's associated with this particular project or has this expertise, I want to email him. So that's kind of out of out of band, if you will, you, you know, defaulting to um, to the email paradigm. But if you wanted to use the new paradigm of let's keep the information within a, a central place I can come back to at any time, I could click to post. So this is the same thing as if I clicked up here, and this, remember, as I said, is your primary interface for um, getting information in and out of the particular uh, interface. And here's where you can share an update. That's the same thing as a, a microblog or a tweet. Um, in fact, depending on the implementation, you can hook into and have that broadcast as your uh, tweet within Twitter. Um, ask a question, right? That directed area to to send this. So I branched off and I wanted to send this particular person. person um, and just like email, I can start to type in the title. It's addressed to him. But some of the quick differentiation of what this provides instead of using email is I can have very powerful ways of saying, if I'm going to send this out, I have better control of who it goes to, what they can do with it, who can see it, and, and keep it up to date, if you will. So in this particular case, um, I'm going to take off the back. This is just more, I just want you to be aware of this um, for this particular person. But I could turn it in and, you know, say within this powerful editor, I want you to work on this with me. Well, that's the same thing as a wiki, right? If we collectively work on a document with the internal editor together, that's just like a wiki without calling it that. It's a much simpler interface. So I can expand and contract um, where I want to send information to. And I can it include communities. So if I had an associated community for this, I can send it to this particular area, or I can manage the special permissions and, and define and highlight you know, who has rights to do what in that area. So much more powerful than, than email. Um, I could also change it to public if I wanted to. And this is where um, you can have other areas and information that can be sent such that uh, the information can go out. Files, documents can be attached. You can tag it such that it can be found more easily um, um, in your environment. So it's a very powerful way to, to look and find and, and create content information with an email-like interface with much better control and effectiveness. On this other tab, I'm, the same thing, same application. I just happen to have, um, remember I said that uh, expertise can be stored and cached in a profile? Well, here's an example of, you know, something I can look for someone, as you, if you're familiar with Cisco, right, CCA is a high-level certification. I can look for that expertise, but you know what? I can intersect that now with a variety of other um, variables or tags that could be um, germane to my whatever I'm trying to do. So maybe I wanted to find someone that was very technical, but also happened to be fluent in Spanish and English. So I can, at, you know, with two clicks, narrow that down to entire population of one person. Never before in Cisco, and nowhere I'd imagine in your environment, could you have that power and flexibility to cross dynamically have the intersection of all these variables of people and tags and narrow down succinctly to someone with that information. So I'll end on the showing you the profile and it's what everyone has and they can edit their profile. And it's um, broken up into uh, the ability that people can edit it, right? It's their profile. So just like every application has an about page, well, every person has an about page. And this is where people can find more information about you within your profile, but it's up to the person to edit it. You can write and type in a bio, some expertise, and some interest, right? This is specific to the expertise, probably work-related, but it could be adjacent to work. Um, and the interest is, you know, whatever you'd want. And here's where, you know, through that social architecture of what TouchBase would help you suggest, you know, here you want to gather your employees and collect the, the expertise for them and, and help them populate their, their profile such that you can have that and you know take advantage of that but within the other tabs um, you know we can see the the reporting structure this comes from the, you know the defined hierarchy within your um, functions the featured content and this is that ability that if you publish things you can put it to your featured posts you can also have the ability to much you know much like facebook if you want to don't need to you can publish you know pictures about you and your family um, you know where you live and so on so this is that ability to have that virtual cube wall in some respects for you know the people that just in a large 
global distributed environment just may not have that ability to find out other people. And certainly it's the place to see all the activities because that's what social provides is the better visibility of who, what, who people are and what they're doing, what, they're know, what they know and who they're connected to. So that's a brief snapshot of what the profile can provide for that. So very powerful application. I'd encourage if you want further information to align for a, specific, a more detailed presentation and or demonstration via touch base, which I can assist with. Um, but Reardon, that's what I have for today. Jeff, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, you know, I think um, you know, clearly it's, it's a very deep product, um, uh, WebEx Social, and so we asked Jeff to give a very quick overview today. Um, uh, which you've done well, Jeff, and I really appreciate that. It's, it needs uh, more time, I think, if, if uh, people are interested in seeing more of it, then perhaps they could let us know. So, Jeff, Pratt, could you just pass me the ball back, if possible? Sure can. And I'll sort of I'll sum up. Okay. Bear with me one moment. So just in, in summarizing, really, I'm conscious of your time. Um, enterprise social software obviously is going to become, uh, or is, or will become uh, important very quickly. And I think, I mean, TouchBase are particularly excited about this sort of um, development from a, a communication or a collaboration perspective, because it really starts to bring together many of the, um, many of the tools that we have been working with clients on uh, over the last uh, few years, and it brings it together from a user perspective into one interface, uh, which hopefully will become the place in which they they live and the place in which they do their their work. And 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 that's really what we want to try and help uh, clients achieve. Uh, as with all technology investments, the key to making the right decision and getting the return you you. Uh, deserve and want out of it is to understand what your business requirements are, make sure that the solution's right for those requirements. All this sounds very obvious, but it's surprising how often we see people uh, jump the steps, um, executing it uh, perfectly from a rollout perspective. And I think with this specifically, the change management, management piece is sh should be accentuated more than perhaps in other areas of technology, because you're really asking people to change the way that they work. And we're all accustomed to going to email to do certain things. We now go to IM to do certain things. Jeff mentioned all the other tools like wikis. And um, and that's the way we operate. But to make this type of application effectively, you need to change the behavior of people. We're seeing it adopted. Um, the adoption is, is increasing uh, either by team, which is uh, fairly straightforward to in, improve general collaboration, obviously within a specific team, you have much more control over what people do and how they do, do it, and therefore it's quite a simple way to start embracing this. By process uh, is exciting, I think, if you look at something like a sales, a complex sales process, which involves many people, uh, a huge amount of documentation, a lot of document uh, control, um, and a lot of expertise, that would be a, a process that can be radically impacted um, and positively impacted by enterprise uh, social software. And so looking at things like the uh, complex sales process or um, customer support or provisioning or the R&D process or the production process, whatever it might be that's important to you and your organization, looking at a specific business process is quite a good way to uh, start to see what the impact of enterprise social software could be. And then, of course, there's the enterprise-wide um, approach, which uh, is equally powerful, slightly uh, more complex uh, if you're a large organization, because clearly the change management piece um, becomes more important the more people you've got, uh, it becomes more challenging the more people you've got. But from an enterprise-wide perspective, we think the single biggest win and the quickest win is all around um, the access to skills. So the ability to harness the skills of an entire organization behind the person who is trying to get something done, trying to fix a customer issue or trying to put a proposal together or trying to build a new product. 
giving them the access to the entire skills of the company, regardless of who they know, and to understand you know, where they are, whether they're contactable, how they like to be contacted, is just vastly powerful. And so if, for nothing else, a company looked at uh, WebEx Social as a means to bring together the skills of the entire enterprise and give every person access to those skills in real time, that would justify the investment in the platform and the development of the platform. And then you can get on to all of the other things that are, um, that are valuable and important. And so I think, you know, we would certainly say if you're looking from an enterprise-wide perspective, that's the biggest quick win you can find, and, um, and we would urge you to take a look at it quickly. So I think however you apply this stuff, it is pretty uh, malleable. I mean, you, you can do a lot with it. Uh, the question is what you want to do with it. And so your choice of partner, clearly we'd like you to choose us, um, but you may have people that you're working with already who can um, help you understand how to uh, you know, how to understand your requirements and apply those to this technology. The technology itself is important. Uh, clearly, if you're running um, this within the enterprise, you want it to be secure, <clears throat> you want it to be scalable, and you want it to have a, a, a lot of focus on policy and control, um, which are alien to a lot of social, in inverted commas, concepts. But in the real world of business, you, you still have to main control, maintain control and you still have to have policies which, um, which direct people to do things in certain ways. And, and that's one of the reasons we love the Cisco WebEx Social Solution because it is built from an enterprise's perspective. It isn't built from a sort of social into business, it's built for business, um, uh, which we think is very important. Uh, and of course, you've got to get executive support for this initiative. Um, initiatives around enterprise social software do uh, uh, change the way the company operates. And so that requires executives to drive down the rationale for the change, the fact that it is going to change, so that we make sure that it does change. And so I think from our perspective, we're very excited about uh, enterprise social software. It's a big shift. Um, it may take some time for it to become all pervasive in all organizations, but those companies that embrace it now will benefit immensely from what it does, what it does for team collaboration, what it does for access to skills, what it does for uh, speed of doing business, and, and ultimately uh, to drive your competitive edge, which you know, at the end of the day, every company is, is fighting in markets with competition. So anything you can do to um, improve the way in which you operate, the speed at which you operate, and the way you deal with your customers has to be at the top of your agendas and uh, the executive agendas. So uh, that would be our, our sort of summary of, of um, this area of technology. And obviously, if you want any help with anything, uh, let us know. We'd love to help you with any aspect. Um, and we can uh, bring Jeff uh, in for any sort of deep dive that people require. But uh, I'll just throw it out and see if there are any questions quickly. The mighty silence. Well, uh, if you do have questions, let us know. Um, and, and obviously, if you want us to help with anything, let us know. But in the meantime, I hope that this was uh, useful for you. I do know it's a big um, sacrifice to give up time, so we're pretty, uh, pretty interested in making sure these webinars are valuable. Thanks uh, very much, and uh, look forward to talking to you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.